Well, we are back. It's been a couple weeks and uh, certainly, Mark, some lessons learned over the past uh, 13 days or so, one of which being don't uh, don't get into a fantasy football league with uh, Tommy Pham. You just don't want to do it. Well, listen, my, my question is, I want to know exactly how much the money they were paying playing for. Well, look, I mean, these guys that's are the multimillionaires. Kind of I have that's imagined. what I want to know. <laughs> for those who don't know, um, Jock Peterson. Yep. Who uh, plays for the San Francisco Giants now uh, had an interesting press conference after a game in which uh, he said he was slapped. And then video came out later showing Tommy Pham during uh, the pregame warmups, literally walking up to Jock Peterson at the warning track where he was just tossing <laughs> yeah. and just smacks him across the face. And Absolutely. it was serious. Yeah. Like I, I, at first, I thought this was like a joke of some sort. Um, no, Tommy Pham slapped him across the face because of an issue in their fantasy football league from a year prior in which Jock Peterson used the IR designation for a player that wasn't on IR, but was just out for the game. So he put him on the IR spot and then picked up another player. And, uh, and I guess he won the game or something like that. And then Tommy Pham said, you're messing with my money. And you know, that's not cool. You know, you don't do that. It's just, it's so ridiculous. But as you mentioned, Mark, uh, it's another way that football uh, could be saving baseball. That's an interesting way to put it. Again, I just need to know, I mean, is it just these guys are competitive and he cares that much or how much money? Like, he's messing yeah. with my money. For a guy like Tommy Fan, I mean, he's not, uh, you know, he didn't make Manny Machado money. But, you're like, I mean, he's had a nice career. Like, I mean, yeah. I think the average baseball fan recognizes the name. I certainly recognize the name, and I consider myself the – uh, slightly above average baseball fan. And, um, and so, you know, Jack Peterson's had a really nice career, uh, but again, how much money are these guys in and trout being the, the, uh, the, the manager of it all, the commissioner, I think it makes it more interesting. I want to know the money. What was the money situation? Ryan Day spilled money talk uh, earlier he for college sure football, did. but uh, I want to know the money talk for uh, for this fantasy league. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to imagine that it was uh, an amount that would be significant to their overall net worth. Yeah. Uh, but I could see it being tens of thousands, you know. On, Absolutely. Uh, on, on some sort of league, easily you could see that. But I highly doubt they would put like $5 million on this. And now maybe they did. I don't know. But here, case in point, uh, I know that, you know, Trout's taking a lot of heat for this, but, and, and maybe deservedly so, but that's something, if, if the league agrees on it, you know, before the league, the, the settings are what the settings are. So if, if it was a legal move, then so be it. That's just kind of how things go. You could disagree with it. Yeah. But uh, just to literally assault someone over that, it's a little, taking a little bit too far, I'd say for sure. Uh, I mean, absolutely. I, I, but I love also too. They didn't shy away from it. Both of them were like, "Yeah, my fans like, yeah, no, I'm not appealing my suspension. I hit him, and I hit him for these reasons." And Jack Peterson was like, calmly pulls out the text, be like, "Yeah, I sent this gif," uh, and uh, you know, it's it just it's it's um. Listen, I'm in a fantasy football league that's a very uh, it's been around for a long time, and guys, you you know, you start to know guys' tendencies and what they like to do. And how they like to play their team. And the only time I ever get mad at fantasy football is when one of the guys, like, he just gets lazy and doesn't set his lineup, and then someone else gets an easy win. You know, if you want to stash people on IR, you want to do all these things that the, again, the, the, the whatever rules of your league allow you to do, hey, be competitive, do whatever you feel like you got to do. I just hate when guys get lazy and they don't set their lineups. Yeah, that is really annoying because then it's just, it's not fun at that point. Also, last year when Taysom Hill, uh, started at quarterback, but was eligible as a tight end. That kind of pissed me off too. I was like, ESPN, yeah. what are we doing here? Come on. Yeah, a little, like he's a quarterback I, a today. Cheap. He's a, yeah. that's a little cheap. We have a fun show for you today. Uh, we are going to be going over Chris Sims, top yes. 40 NFL quarterbacks. He has ranked them. He is revealing them bit by bit. And right now we have 40 through 13. So we are going to go over that list of rankings and see where we agree. See, or see where we disagree as well. But first, of course, some news and notes as well. We had a few retirements uh, over the past few days, Mark, and some very notable ones. We'll start 
with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Frank Gore, after 16 seasons as an NFL running back, hanging up the cleats, uh, definitely a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, and he signed a one day contract with the San Francisco 49ers uh, to, uh, you know, make his retirement official from the sport and to retire a 49er, where, of course, his most notable, uh, you know, moments throughout his career happened. But I mean, I, I tweeted about this, too, in terms of the mark he's made. You you could say certain guys are um, very noticeable, mainly you know, whether it be their play style or something unique they brought to the table. You know, Walter uh, had that unique aspect of being an extremely versatile guy that was very, very uh, tough to bring down. Like he attacked it, right? And he was the never die easy guy. You had yeah. the Jerome Bettis's, the, the bowling balls, like very unique aspects. I wouldn't say Frank Gore had any unique aspect to his game, but longevity uh, was certainly the thing for me that stands out the most. He is a longevity legend especially Mark after tearing two ACLs in college, he had a pretty healthy NFL career after that, which is tough to say, especially for the area era that he came out of where ACL tears were still uh, considered to be potentially career enders. I, you know, my, my it, it's Frank Gore is one of those really tough narratives because Frank Gore is a first bout hall of famer. He is exactly what you want when you uh, invest in a player. I mean, he talk about a guy that you never heard any off the field issues. Uh, you never heard any concerns in the locker room. Um, but when it comes to putting Frank Gore in that pantheon and trying to, you know, put his career now that it's, n it's done in a, in a package compared to other people's careers, uh, two things come to mind. We'll never see another Frank Gore in the sense that running backs will never get the longevity. Uh, I think that some of the safest records in the NFL history books are um, Emmitt Smith, Walter Payton, Frank Gorg. Those guys, you you hit 12,000 or more, I think a lot of those records are safe. They're not moving. Guys are not going to get to that. They're just not. Um, Frank Gore and Adrian Peterson would be the other. They're the, la they're the final ones of a dying breed of running backs. You draft early, you invest in a, a, a high pick in, and then they are your running back for 10 years. Uh, that does not exist anymore. It just doesn't. And um, maybe there is a guy out there who can change that narrative, who's just going to be so healthy and so good for so long uh, that can, that can you know, do that. I mean, Derrick Henry kind of comes to mind, depending on the, the, sure. the rest of his career goes. But again, even now, you're starting to see the injuries build up. So Frank Gore is the last of a very dying and dead breed, an extinct breed in, in a lot of ways. But let's be honest, I don't think anyone – would really, except for maybe diehard 49ers fans, put Frank Gore as a top five running back of all time. And I would argue, and I think we did this last summer, I'd have to go back and look. I think I'd argue he's closer to 10 than he is to five. And that's oh, sure. not a, it's not a knock. I'm not trying to, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He is an NFL legend. But the way he ran and his style and who he was as a player versus some of the talent you see in other guys, Frank Gore's, um, peak was longer but some guys peaks were much much higher does that make sense absolutely yeah i i definitely agree look he he had some really solid seasons and you know was a five-time pro bowler and uh won several awards uh over his career uh he was you know top 100 for like five years in a row um you know all 2010s team so he, he's brought a lot to the table but as far as I know, Mark, I'm, I'm looking here. I, I, he, I don't think he was ever a first team all pro. Um, and, or no, okay. 2006, he was a first team all pro. So one time in his career, yeah. he was considered the best at his position. You know, that like, to your point, all of the top 10 running backs of all time, you would say at, at one point or another, were the best at their position. Absolutely. Um, for multiple at, at one years. point or another quarterbacks a little bit tougher because there were eras where there were, you know, four or five dominant quarterbacks. Um, but you know, running back you, you to, to stick up, to stay apart uh, from the pack. Uh, but in 06, I mean, he ran for nearly 1700 yards, eight touchdowns, and he had nearly 500 yards receiving as well. So over 2200 uh, or 2100 all purpose yards, um, pretty good, pretty solid. And, uh, you know, 
just because he wasn't dominant for 16 years uh, to be able to stay in the league and beat and for teams to see you uh, as a value uh, that, that obviously uh, lends credence to, you know, his legend. And it's awesome that he ends his career on the button, 16,000 yards. Yeah. That's uh that's pretty cool. Third that all is, time. That is a noticeable part of it all. I think, um, I listen, I think he's, I, I love that he's retiring with the Niners. He bounced around a lot towards the end of his career, but he's a, He's a 49er. He's a ring of honor guy for them. He's a, when he goes to the hall of fame, should be a a 49er. Absolutely. And uh, should be again, first ballot. And I do think he, he has a special place in NFL history where he is, you can look at him and say in an era where um, that breed was dying, uh, him and Adrian Peterson were able to still play seventies, eighties and nineties football in the 2000s and the teens, which is just, you know, it is really, really impressive. Very much so. Uh, Another notable retirement, Alex Mack, the longtime center. Uh, You know, I honestly remembered him mostly for his years uh, with the Falcons, but he he had uh, the majority of his career in Cleveland. Yeah. uh, Drafted there in 09, uh, played with them till 2015, but uh, he played a good 13 years in the NFL and was a, you know, really good center for a long time, seven pro bowls for him and a member of the all decade team, as well as the NFL all rookie team back in 2009, very, uh, you know, stout lineman. We were talking about this right before the show hall of fame, you know, certainly going to be tough to make the case early on. It's hard enough for linemen to kind of crack that mold. You have to really, really stick out and be that dominant player for a long period of time uh, to be considered for that. And, you know, it's just kind of unfortunate the nature of the position. You're basically competing with five other positions uh, on that offensive line to get in. They don't view them as centers, guards, tackles. It's more yeah. offensive linemen in general. So uh, really, really good player. Might make the Hall of Fame one day, uh, but I don't think we're anticipating it anytime soon. I, I mean, I'll just say this. I think more importantly, you might have a second-year quarterback with very a, a very inexperienced starting You lose Alex Mack, uh, who is so integral to their offensive line, that very unique Shanahan zone run scheme. That is a, that is a huge storyline going to camp, especially because they, I was reading an article. uh, They have a couple rookies that they're going to consider at the position and, and maybe try to earn it. But uh, the vet, the couple other veterans they have who are kind of guard center combos. um, No one that like, Oh, that name pops into my head. That sounds good for an offense that relies heavily on running the football and will rely on it even more with the young quarterback. That's a a huge blow for San Francisco. Yeah. And the center position is the leader of the offensive line calling out, uh, you know, the mic calling out different assignments, uh, getting everyone lined up properly. And when you want to talk about the zone run, that's even more important uh, because you need to make sure everyone's on the same page in terms of, uh, you know, who's attacking first, uh, along the line. So yeah, that, you know, having an experienced guy there to lead the offensive line with a young quarterback and Trey Lance, uh, definitely uh, take your point there. Finally, Ryan Fitzpatrick hangs him up after 16 seasons as an NFL quarterback. The, the guy whose career is a mystery to this day and forever yeah. will be uh, the Harvard man who made a very long, fruitful career uh, largely as a backup in the NFL yeah. and uh, and obviously gave us some very memorable moments, uh, the latest of which being the uh, the throw for the Dolphins in which his head was being ripped off and uh, somehow completed a pass down the sideline. But uh, an interesting career for him, and I thought it was pretty cool. He posted a picture, uh, basically a collage of all the names of his teammates over the years. That's a lot of names in there, but uh, that was a cool way to kind of sign off. Uh, played for a lot of teams. Years in Buffalo were probably his most, uh, you know, decorated, uh, but he definitely was a big time leader for a lot of the teams lately down the stretch uh, and ending it there in Washington. I'll just say this. I think as we said with Frank Gore, he is the dying breed. I actually think the Ryan Fitzpatrick's of the world, no one will do it like him, but the guys who will have that type of career, there's a couple I can already see in the NFL I think a Mitch Trubisky is a guy who could have a Ryan, a, a Ryan Fitzpatrick type of career. Really good guy. People like him. Talented enough to continue to win you one or two games a year if you need him to or to start a season with. Um, 
that with a young quarterback, I think Trubisky's that type of guy. Yep. I think um, Bridgewater might be. Brid- well, or, Bridgewater, uh, Brissett. a little bit less. You know, Brissett, I think his is tailing off. But those, there's, I mean, I think Mitch could have a 10-year run of that. Um, I think that, you know, depending on where things go, like Jalen Hurts could have a 10-year run of that. You know what I mean? There are some guys out there that, um, that feel like that type of quarterback. We'll talk about a couple of them coming on up here uh, on this list. And uh, I think that um, I think so while Ryan Fitzpatrick, no one did it like him and he is the goat backup quarterback slash spot starter of all time. Um, And he's the type of guy that you almost, you almost wish maybe the XFL or this new USFL were like bigger and better um, or even even the the Canadian Football League was just had more presence because he's the type of guy that in a league like that that le- a slightly lower than the NFL would be like an all timer. I mean, he would yeah, put up yeah. a cool insane, story. Sure. You know, like whoever is the best MLS player of all time would just dominate the MLS, but never played in the other leagues like the real leagues, like the EPL or the Bundesliga, Premier. Yeah, Premier, yeah like if he like. That that's right. That could have been Ryan Fitzpatrick in another one of those leagues, but he made himself a legend. The NFL made a lot of money and uh, he's going to, he will be a sneaky guy for like a Fox or an ESPN to pick up to like add to a booth. Maybe I think he'd be really fun in a booth. Well, uh, they just uh, released some preliminary information that a deal is in the works with Amazon with oh, uh, go- Fitzpatrick. So See, if he's going to be a part of maybe the field crew um, for Thursday night football. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if they expand into like doing some actual shows, I, he'd, he'd be great. I totally agree. He's yeah. got the personality. He's a recognizable brand, you know, with the big beard and he's a jovial man. Uh, everyone seems to like him. So I don't think there'd be any issues in terms of, uh, you know, colleagues. And that's really important in this space, especially with all of the, you know, uh, meetings that take place prior to a lot of these shows. So yeah, I, I think that would be a great fit for him. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, c- certainly the, not the last we've seen of Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, in relation to the NFL, looking forward to, to seeing him and hearing from him in the coming years. Uh, finally, Mark, before we get into this list, which I'm excited for, did you watch the match at all? Did you uh, get to see any of it? I did. I did watch uh, for a little bit, but it, you know, one of those things like to me, the novelty of that's kind of really worn off. And until yeah. they go pay-per-view where it's like, Oh no, no, no. These guys can really swear. They can really kind of air it out. You know, it's fun. It's interesting. Um, I will say this. I was surprised at how good Mahomes is. He's a good golfer. He's really good. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, he's really good. Allen and Allen is, is, is fun to watch. I mean, he's, he's just a a really funny personality. Um, Chuck, I mean, Charles Barkley is gold on that stuff. So I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the parts I watched, but I didn't, I didn't commit like, Oh, I'm watching every minute. Yeah. No, no, it's uh, I had the same kind of um, feeling towards it. It was a, it's a fun idea. It's really cool. I kind of got stoked for it, but after a couple holes, I was like, you know, it's it is what it is and, and i i like watching good golf you know and yeah, these right. guys are like, it's not very good um you know mahomes was good of course and and you know they had moments um i what i was more taking back you don't often see these guys in shirts and shorts i mean josh allen is massive he's that huge guy is just a huge dude like his calves were huge and different and, huge than like 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 a cam newton because that's whatever or like big yeah ben. Because Big Ben and Cam, right. like, were giant in their own right. I mean, Cam looks like he's, like, chiseled out of stone and, like, just proportionally. But Josh Allen is one of those guys who are just, like, he – it's almost like his body type should have been, like, he would have been, like, five, like, nine and just, like – but, like, just kept growing. And he's just – Well, he would have been a rugby player. He, he yeah, looked like I mean, he, he could be a rugby player. You're absolutely right. And uh, and 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 you're it is interesting seeing him just shorts. and Because Brady is tall. That's the one thing that everyone yeah. – Whenever you hear people talk about like, oh, meeting Tom Brady, they always say like, you're taken aback by how tall he is. Same thing with Peyton Manning, because they are. I mean, those guys are true six five, and that's Josh Allen too. I mean, like every inch is six five, six six, and I mean, and it's uh, it's interesting when we get to this list, you start to think like that matters when you talk about like who do you think right now are the best quarterbacks in the NFL? Size, I think, plays a plays a real part of it, for sure. 
Okay, yeah. So this is the Chris Sims top 40 quarterbacks ranked in order. And we're going to start from 40. And then he has completed his list up to 13 so far. So we'll go through all of these. We'll probably do about 10 at a time. And uh, so we'll start with 40 through 31 and uh, and kind of see where if we're following a pattern with him or if yeah. uh, if things are, are not working out as expected. So we'll start at 40. He has Drew Locke of the you know Seattle Seahawks, uh, newly of the Seattle Seahawks, 39 Kenny Pickett, interestingly enough. Yep. 38 Teddy Bridgewater. 37 is Gardner Minshew. 36 Tyrod Taylor. 35 Davis Mills. 34 Tyler Huntley. And he's uh you know for like some of these names um, maybe the uh, average uh, viewer doesn't even know because honestly, they're backups. Tyler Huntley, the backup for Baltimore. Um, most people know Gardner Minshew uh, for, for that one year he had in Jacksonville. Uh, so Tyler Huntley, 34, 33, Geno Smith, 32, Sam Darnold, and 31, Trey Lance. Your initial yeah. thoughts on 40 through 31 there. My initial thoughts on 40 through 31. So I have my top 40 here. It's part of what I've been scribbling here as we started the show, just like making some changes and going through it. As you see from, if you look at my list from 15 to 26, there's a lot of crossing out and redoing because <laughs> yeah. that is to me, like that's the hardest part. That's the bulk of it. The be beginning of the list and the end of the list is easier. So things that stood out to me, I think Teddy Bridgewater, um, I have him last. I actually have him, uh, Drew Locke, ahead of True Teddy Bridgewater. If you told me today I had two options at quarterback to start my season, Teddy or Drew Locke, I would go Drew just for the upside of the big arm and the, like, the, hey, maybe he can make a wow play as opposed to uh, Teddy Bridgewater and having to just run such a safe offense. Uh, but, again, don't want to spend too much time on it. Um Minshew, I thought it's a little low. I put Minshew up. I moved him up to 34. Tyler Huntley, I thought is a little low as well. I, I actually have him at 31. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think, um, oh, I have Marcus Mariota in this 40 through 31. I have him 35. I don't think Marcus Mariota deserves to be as high as 28. So those are kind of the big takeaways for me in that, in that group. And Jared Goff. Jared Goff, that, oh, we'll, we'll get to him next. But uh Otherwise, yeah, I, I I move I move Lance up a spot and uh, but yeah, I think it's about right. Those are those are guys that um, you know you're in a tough spot if you're starting the season with any of those guys. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, I would put Geno Smith much further down. I it, to me, he's in that. Third, like I I would rather have Teddy Bridgewater than Geno Smith. I'll, I'll uh, say yeah. that right now. I I don't. Um, to me, I think. I think Drew Locke is in a correct spot where he's at. I would agree with the 40. 39. Kenny Pickett probably deserves to be there because he hasn't he hasn't done have we, no we have literally have no idea. So he's literally kind no of idea. just like hard to rank. So I'm fine with that. They threw 38 Kenny at in there pure, purely for this kind of fun debate, for sure. Right, right. 38 with Teddy Bridgewater, I think is too low for him. I I I think uh the fact that he doesn't turn the ball over hardly ever uh, and, and is a good leader. I mean, every locker room he's been in has raved about, you know, him as a person. I think yeah. some of those things do matter. And I think that's what would put him ahead of a drew lock in my book. I would bring Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not going to say he's um, top 30, much, much higher, but I'd probably put him like 33 or 34. Um, so of, of all the, so you would, you would basically what you're saying is Teddy is your kind of number one, spot starter back up in the league yeah yes essentially yes okay um, i can i would with rather that. have in terms of anyone else that i would rather maybe see as a spot starter uh would be a guy like um a tyler hunley who i think yeah. is a really talented quarterback he hasn't had a lot of opportunities so he he is tyler hunley and teddy bridgewater are are neck and neck whether you want to say 33 34 or flip them um, to me, that's kind of where they're at. I think Darnold is properly rated there at 32. Um, he's got to prove it otherwise. Yeah. Um, but I don't have too much a di disagreement with the rest of 40 through 31. Agreed. All right, let's go through 30 through 21. And this is where things are going to get interesting. Really dicey. Sure. Um, 
So we've got 30 at Jer as Jared Goff. 29 is Tua. 28 is Marcus Mariota. 27, mm -hmm. Mitchell Trubisky. 26, Jameis Winston. 25, Jalen Hurts. 24, Trevor Lawrence. 23, Justin Fields. 22, Zach Wilson. And 21, Daniel Jones. I certainly have some disagreements with this block, probably more than any anything else. Yeah, uh, I, I'll, I agree. I'll I first. actually, it's funny because people think, oh, Mark Skev, Justin Fields, higher than 23. No, I actually have him low. I have him at 27. Um, so for me, I will go, let me, let me go from, I'll give mine 30 through 21. So I'm going 30. I'm going Trey Lance and you're going to see kind of this bulk of quarterbacks here that I just don't know. So I put Lance below Wilson. And I know that seems crazy because everyone's like, Mark, you hate Wilson and you like Lance. I do, but they're right neck and neck. At least I have more footage on Wilson as of right now. Um, but if you probably, yeah. you know, held a gun to your head and said, start the season with one, I would probably take Lance over Wilson. So maybe I should flip those. All right, screw it. Wilson at 30, Lance at 29, Daniel Jones at 28 for me. I think he deserves to be way lower than 21. I think he is stuck in this group of rookie quarterbacks because we have enough footage on him to see what he is. And, uh, you know, maybe again, another new coach for Daniel Jones, and maybe this will, maybe it's a pop year, but I feel like I doubt it. I have Fields then at 27 again, upside, and I watch Fields closely. So I, I, I mean, I have thought I have positive thoughts on Fields going into this year, uh, and then 26 to me is Tua. Then I go 25 Trubisky, 24 Jameis Winston, and then 23 is where I go Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff deserves to be higher than Fields, Jones, Wilson, Lance. Uh, Tua, Trubisky, Winston. I think Goff, again, has, I mean, he's made a Super Bowl. He was not garbage in Detroit last year, even though he had no one to throw to. I think Jared Goff, to me, again, if you're saying right now, start the season, you got to win as many games as you possibly can, I would certainly take Goff ahead. I know what I get more than I get out of Winston, uh, Trubisky, Tua, Daniel Jones. I maybe not take him ahead of some of the younger guys just for the, the promise, but as far as this ranking goes, like who's the best right now? I would put Goff ahead of Fields, Wilson, Lance, all those guys. I think I think he's really underrating Jared Goff right now. Um, and then I go Trevor Lawrence, 22, and Carson Wentz, 21. Lawrence gets the bump just because there were some flashes last year that you saw that were just really, really impressive. And I do think Trevor Lawrence is so uber talented. And now that he's going to have – a real NFL uh, coaching staff and a real NFL head coach. Uh, and they invest a lot of weapons in him. I think his, his ceiling's going to really, uh, you're going to see the ceiling really explode um, this morning. And I, as of this morning, I would take Trevor Lawrence ahead of everyone, you know, everyone I, I just listed as far as starting the season with. Yeah. I would put Trevor Lawrence, uh, the, the three he has ahead of him, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Daniel Jones. I take Trevor Lawrence above each and every one of them. Yeah, I agree. And I think those three deserve to be much, much lower. Um, so Jared Goff at 30, I disagree with. I would put Marcus Mariota at 30. That's kind of where I have him. Okay. Uh, I have I have Mariota there at 30. And honestly, you know, I could, I could easily be persuaded to have him out of the top 32. I think the fact that he's had some time as a backup and, you know, in Tennessee, they weren't, he didn't have very good teams. Like what would he be like truly under the Mike Vrabel system? Obviously they wanted to bring Tannehill in. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of what he's got left in the tank. And I think the fact that he still brings mobility to the table elevates him a little bit there. So I, I have him at 30 uh, to uh, fairly properly rated at 29. Although honestly, I'd probably put Mitch there and then, might have Tua just because of Tua's accuracy uh, right ahead of him. So like Mitch 29, Tua 28. But honestly, at 27, I, I mean, Jameis, he had at 26. I would put Jameis at 27. And then Hertz at 26, or maybe flip them. And then right after that would be Goff. So Goff is about 25. And then the rest there um, with, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. I totally screwed that up because I had uh, 
Fields uh, higher or, or lower, I'm sorry. And then uh, I have Fields ahead of Zach Wilson and Daniel Jones. I would take Fields over those two guys. So, I agree. Um, I agree. And, and I would take them over to us. So um, after Mitch, um, I would take Fields. Uh, or, or I'm sorry. So it'd be Daniel Jones, then Zach Wilson at 26, then Fields at 25. Then it'd be Jared Goff there at 24. Because I you. would take Jared Goff ahead of those guys, even though For honestly, if I were to right start now, a season, I would want to have Justin Fields over Jared Goff. Like honestly, agreed. I would. Like, but as far as talent goes right now, and like, hey, you just need, you know what I mean? Who is the better NFL quarterback as of today, right now? I agree, it's got to be Jared Goff. I think you got to put Jared Goff above that group of guys. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then you know, like. Winston and Hertz, it's just uh they're, they're kind of tough guys to rank because I don't really know where to put them. Um see it's interesting. I as- have Winston higher and 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 I have I haven't even gotten Hertz yet. I have Hertz way higher. I think Hertz or I think Hertz I think to me Hertz deserves um right now as I'm as I sit here, what he did last year at times in that system, especially leading them to that playoff run in that last six, seven game stretch. Hertz has to me so much upside. Again, he is um he is Kyler Murray, like he's diet Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's Coke, he's Diet Coke. And there's times when Diet Coke's better than Coke. I, I think um I think uh, for me, Jalen Hurts, I'll make the case when we get to it here, but I I to me, I would I would put Jalen Hurts ahead of a lot of guys right now to start the season. Now, again, if you're telling me, no, 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 you're choosing this quarterback to be your uh, your franchise for the next three to four years. I think he'd end up again lower on that list. I would probably go Fields. I would I would take a look at Lance even maybe. Uh some of those younger guys with bigger upside, Lawrence. But for today, I'm actually putting Hertz ahead of a lot of those guys. Yeah, see, I I would have Lawrence at 21 there and Hertz would be right behind him. I would rather to have Lawrence than Hertz, but I do think they're close. And then okay. Jameis probably comes in at like 23, although he could easily fall to 32. And after a few games, honestly, it, it's really going to depend on um, agreed given. I think I gave him the benefit of the doubt because of his start last year. He played really you know, well played until well. the injury, but he that was with well. Sean Payton. So, and we've seen yeah. Jameis with a bunch of bad coaches in Tampa. And the one year he had Bruce Arians, who's an offensive guy, 30 and 30. So, yeah. and then you get him with a hall of fame, offensive coach and Sean Payton. And it's like, Oh, it's better than 30 for 30. It's an even mark to prove it. Well, now he's going back to a defensive guy. So Jameis, I think Jameis is a lot of who you pair him with, but you see at his ceiling when he's paired with, with really talented people and listen, they have some good weapons now in, in, in New Orleans, especially if Michael Thomas comes back. So we'll see. I, I think Jameis, um, it was uh, Colin Coward who made the case that Jameis was kind of limping in practice and, he was saying in a show the other day that uh, the, the Saints should look at Baker. Uh, listen, I would take Baker over Jameis, and so I don't hate that idea. We'll get into that, I think, portion of the yep. list now. You want to go from 20 to 11? Well, before we get there, of the 20 that we've discussed, is there someone in this list that you think has the, the opportunity to make the biggest jump? Yeah, okay. Who, who oh, of this great. group would you say? Yeah, I think Lawrence, Fields, and Lance all have the possibility of being top 12 guys within the next two years. I think they, though, all three of those guys have the talent to make double digit jumps, to be in that top 15, to be in the conversation in the top 10. Lawrence, Lance, and Fields. I think no one else on this list so far that we talked about to me uh, Tua, no. Winston, no. Trubisky, no. Goff, no. Uh, it hurts. No, uh, Darnold Huntley, Wilson Jones. None of those guys. I think yeah. those are still the three fields, Lawrence and Lance. I'm not done on them. One year, uh, is, is not enough to write them off to not, they all could make jumps into that top 15, 12, 10 conversation, uh, as early as maybe next year, honestly. Yeah. Uh, depending on, depending on the kind of years they have in their sophomore, sophomore so a potential season. jump of roughly 10 spots. The only other person I would throw in there that could potentially jump like 15 spots and it would be all because of, you know, potential opportunity 
would be Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I guess I didn't look if, at if him that Kenny far. starts and he plays well, he could be in the twenties for sure. He could be in twenty. He could be be twenty five. You know, by oh, the he end could be of the in the year, any, he could be anywhere in that eighteen to twenty five range yeah. for sure. Yeah, Absolutely, he he, we just like Trevor we Lawrence. Don't is. know anything about him. Yeah, like Trevor Lawrence is now. He's you know what I mean. Yeah. Kenny Pickett has. You're right. I should have. I should have included Kenny in that. So let's go uh, twenty through thirteen then, which is uh, what will take us to the uh, final grouping of Sims's list here. Do you know when he is he expected um, to roll the rest out um, all in one or? No, I think it's still he, going at a time. I think I think as it gets close to the top ten, I think he does two or one. I think he really they drag this thing out as a summer thing, and yeah. you know this is the NBC. Uh, him and him and uh, uh, what's his name, Florio. Mike Florio. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do a great job. I, I like them. I think they're. I think they're really good at being, um, kind of like. Well, yeah, they are, but they're also they are very good at kind of playing the Stephen A. Smith, um, uh, you know what's his name on 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 FS1. Uh, Skip. I know. Or I know. Shannon Sharp. Or Shannon Sharp and what's his yeah. name? Uh, who likes the Cowboys? Um. Yeah, Skip Bayless. Skip yeah, Bayless. I yeah. I don't I don't I tr- I avoid them at all costs. So I don't I don't. Uh, yeah. But he they're good at like dipping their toes into that. Like sin, like this list is great for this stuff like that. And that's why of course we're dissecting it and ripping it apart. Uh, but they also are really good at like purely talking football. Football yeah. great and they bring Florio, it back to earth a lot of times. And if you ever need information on like contracts or legal Law. stuff, Florio is is the best in the business uh, with that stuff. Oh, for sure, for sure. He was a former, uh, I think, defense attorney. Yes. Um, if if I remember correctly. So yeah, he definitely knows quite a bit. And that's why they've been they have been the go-to source for information on this whole Deshaun Watson debacle. Absolutely. Um, uh, because they like Florio knows uh very well how to parse through a lot and of And he's these opinionated details. on it. He's very opinionated. Yeah, on it. Definitely. So let's go 20 through 13. We got 20 is Jimmy Garoppolo. 19 Carson Wentz, 18 Mac Jones, 17 Baker Mayfield, 16 Kirk Cousins, 15 Ryan Tannehill, 14 Matt Ryan, and 13 Deshaun Watson. Yeah. An interesting group here. We've got uh, eight guys. Do you, are, are there guys in this list? I think you mentioned Wentz that are out of the top 20 in your opinion. So yeah, Wentz is 21 in mine, and Wentz is the guy this year who his his trajectory goes like this. Depending on how this year goes, he could move up as high as 15, 16, or he could be in that mid 30s or lower by the by the end of this year. I'm I'm like dead serious. Like this is we thought last year was an important year for Carson Wentz. This is like no your career on the line because he is not Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is not going to be a backup. Like. He could, he, he may say, I want to be a backup organizations won't deal with it because high profile talked about a lot. You just don't want that in the room. Like you just like, it's just, it's part of the Tim it's Tebow, like the Cam effect. Newton, Cam effect, Newton. You know. He's very much like Cam Newton. That way Cam Newton Baker. should be Cam Newton could still be on this list in that like 20 and eight through 40 range for sure. But again, you just can't de- you can't have that type of person as a backup. So huge year for Carson Wentz. Um, 20, I have Mac Jones at 20. I have Jimmy G ahead of Mac Jones. I've seen more from Jimmy G. I think Mac Jones is, uh, ceiling is starting to look like a better version of Jimmy G. Mac Jones is ceiling is starting to look like he could be the best version of Kirk cousins, Jimmy G historically immobile, but an elite, you know, dink and dunk, uh, methodical down the field guy who can hit big shots occasionally because he is bigger and a little bit stronger, I think, than Jimmy G and Kirk Cousins. So he's in that, like putting himself in there. Mac Jones will, Mac Jones will forever be in this now 12 to 20 talk because he is, he's like Kirk Cousins, like Dak Prescott, those guys are just like, they live in this talk. He's very much fits that archetype. So I go Mac Jones, 20, Jimmy G 19. I have Baker 18. Again, I think you start the season with Baker Mayfield, you're doing yourself a lot better than the other things. The problem is there's a lot of organizations who have young quarterbacks who are looking to start. And then there's the organizations like Seattle and Atlanta and Carolina 
who they want to be bad. So they don't want Baker Mayfield. So he is caught in that. Ho- this is, th- this is a dead man zone. 18, 19, 20, 21. This yeah. is a, you do not want to be in these, in these spots. So I Baker 18, I have hurt 17 hurts again to me has such uh, mobility. I mean, he is the better version. If Kyler Murray's Coke, uh, he is diet Coke. And then, uh, Who's RC Mitch- Cola? Mitchell Trubisky's RC Cola. The three of them play a very similar game. He, they are all very mobile, very undersized, can get injured, and uh, um, but Kyler Murray's got is the most accurate out of them. Jalen Hurts has the best deep ball of them. Mitchell doesn't have the accuracy of Kyler. He doesn't have the deep ball of Hurts, so that's why he falls in that. But I think Hurts again is the type of guy. Seems like the teammates rally around him. It seems like they build a system around him. And there were times where Jalen Hurts outplayed. Dak Prescott or outplayed other quarterbacks who are higher on this list. I mean, he got his team to the playoffs. I know it's the weaker NFC, but um, I think, I think highly of Jalen hurts. I think Jalen hurts very much. So has a career in this league where Baker probably doesn't, if that makes sense. Um, so That's I fair. have hurt. I have hurt 17. I have cousin 16. I have Matt Ryan, 15. I have Ryan Tannehill, 14, and I'll give you my 13. Cause we got up to 13 with Sims and I have, Prescott 13. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can absolutely see that. I, Deshaun, I, I'm wondering if the Deshaun Watson thing, if he's just putting that into uh, the risk factor of him not playing. Cause I am curious about that. Cause I, I think he's, he's a top 10 quarterback when he's playing and when he's healthy. I'm, well, and I, I mean, think I, I haven't heard Sims's explanation on this. I see this as, and my, and Watson is not in my top 10 spoiler coming on up here in a bit. And a lot of that is, again, I think it's the unknown. I, I, I just, we remember when we did the AFC quarterback list, I think I had Watson a sixth or seventh on that list out of the top eight in the AFC. Well, once you start adding in those NFC guys, like you'll see on this list, like I absolutely will take Matt Stafford right now ahead of Deshaun Watson. I know what I'm getting. You know what I mean? Start Fair adding enough. some of those NFC guys and, and it just recency bias. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, that's where my thought is. And I, I'd imagine that's probably a lot where Chris Sims, Sims thoughts are as well. I'm pretty high on Jimmy G in terms of like, I move him up uh, quite a few spots on this list. Like 20 for me, I agree with you in the Mac Jones conversation. Um, Carson Wentz, I think is appropriately rated at 19. I'd move Baker up a spot at 18 there. And then, you know, 17 for me would go uh, Kirk Cousins, then 15 Matt Ryan. 14 Ryan Tannehill and I would put uh I would put Jimmy G r- right up there at at uh towards the at top. 13. Sean for me comes in between 10 and 12. I don't have a specific spot um in between those three. I think they're very interchangeable at that point. Um but Jimmy G for me comes in r- right at 13 there. Um, yeah. because I I I know what I'm getting with Jimmy G and he's gotten to a Super Bowl and I think he gets I think he gets underrated a lot because of Kyle Shanahan's system and uh, you know, there is the injury risk, but overall I would feel comfortable having Jimmy G as my quarterback ahead of, you know, 37 year old Matt Ryan or a Tannehill that could be up and down and go through these waves. Yeah. And I, I think Jimmy G is a better version of Kirk cousins. Uh, so that's why I have him ahead of those guys. I think that, yeah, I mean, I just, to me, why I have Jimmy at 19 and Cousins, Ryan, and Tannehill at 15, 16, 15, 14 is the health. I don't have yeah. the health concerns with Cousins, Ryan, and Tannehill. And Jimmy G, as much as I, I think he is very much in the, that conversation, the health puts him behind some of those other guys. Um, I will say, you top 13 and up is where every quarterback wants to be. You're a guaranteed starter. If you're top 13 and up 14 through 25 is a weird, weird place to be. If you're a quarterback, because you, if you're a veteran, you have to be a veteran who is maybe on just their second team or a veteran who uh, still is, um, uh, is a really great locker room guy or something like that to where it's like, okay, you're going to start for us. And if you're in that 14 to 25 and you're a guy who's like, fifth sixth year in the league yet you're in a bad spot because that means yeah. you are a high pick who's now on a second team 
and it's a it's a do or die situation, like like a Carson Wentz. Like I mean, you're in a do or die situation. The young guys, uh, you know what I mean, like the really young guys, second year and uh, first year, second year, third year. Them being in that spot is not the worst place in the world if their team still is committing to them. Um, so I have a top 12 of my own I ranked if, if you want to get into it here real quick. to Sure, yeah, we can we can go over these. To wrap it up. They, so they won't have, require too many explanations because I think uh, there's a yeah. lot of agreement between. I think uh, Prescott I have. So I have Prescott at 13. I have Carr at 12. Again, if you're, if you're telling me I have to take Carr or Prescott, a lot of it's a coin flip. But Derek Carr... Um, to me, I like a little bit more of the accuracy. I like a little bit more of the arm strength. And frankly, with Derek Carr, I don't get as much of the drama on the, the big shows. Does that make sense? No one, deb- yeah, like literally yeah. Skip and Shannon, they debate that Prescott every day. Derek Carr somehow avoided all that. And, and, I, and I think there's something to be said about that. Uh, I then have Watson at 11, just outside the top 10. To me, the argument for Watson would be between Watson and Kyler Murray. I'll put Kyler at 10, Watson 11, because, again, recently I've seen Kyler Murray lead his team to the playoffs. And even though I did not love the way Kyler Murray's season ended, and I do not love his offseason right now, um, I think Kyler Murray has in his such elite running ability, um, and his accuracy is incredible. Now, Deshaun Watson, bigger, stronger, his running is different, and his deep ball, I think, is better. But uh, So I think they're very interchangeable. And Watson's the type of guy that within two or three games, you could easily move him up a couple spots on this list. I then have Lamar Jackson, nine, the former MVP. I think it's a big year for him. I think he's the type of guy that could move much closer to that top five. Or, depending on how bad his year is, if he has a bad year and in this contract situation, He's a guy that could be worrying, you know, about what where it looks like. I know it's crazy to say, but he's in a kind of a teeter totter year. Justin Herbert eight, Matt Stafford seven, Joe Burrow six. Now again, we've talked at length about that when we were talking about the AFC quarterbacks. Again, I give Burrow the nod based on the recency of his performance and what he did. I mean, Herbert has had all the opportunity in the world the past two seasons to get that team to the playoffs, and he had moments where he's like, "You win this game, and you're in." And he couldn't get it done. And Burrow, with less talent, in my opinion, and in a uh, in a, a tough division, not as you know, both very tough divisions, got it done. Um, yeah. Joe, so I give Joe Burrow the head. And Stafford seven is a little bit. If Stafford was six years younger, I think Stafford might be five on this list for me, or even higher. But Stafford's aged. He's starts, playing very well. Stafford starts to come into it a little bit. Um, and then, and then to me, the top five is pretty simple. Wilson five, uh, Wilson is in again, Wilson's a guy who could be high as three, maybe even in the top two, depending on the kind of season he has. Wilson absolutely uh, has, uh, is a very unique year ahead of him. Uh, Rogers four, Brady three, Allen two, Mahomes one. So we have the exact same top five. Wilson, uh, Rogers, Brady, yep. Allen, Mahomes. Yep. Right. Right. Right in line with that. Um, I've uh, on this last block, I think I skipped a number there because I had, so I, uh, Jimmy G would, would have been 14 for me. 13 is Dak. Okay. Um, so, and that's what, where you at Dak as well, right? Yes. Okay. So 13 is Dak for me. 12 is Kyler Murray. Uh, 11 is Carr. I would rather have Carr than Murray right now. A, a, a lot of reasons for that. But I think I think Carr is one of those guys that's you know always underrated, um, and Carr has that it factor of like being yep. the leader of a team, right? I trust him, and the arm talent. Like I think if you put him on the Cardinals, Carr would be putting up crazy numbers. Um, but he's got different weapons and a different uh, team yeah. in general. So you don't need to argue too hard for me with that one. I I'm yeah. I'm there with you. I think there's just that elite running talent with Kyler stands out to me, which is why I give him the slight nod, but absolutely Carr deserves to be in that conversation. Yeah. 10 is a Deshaun for me. And then nine Lamar, eight Stafford. And, and, you know, I know that you, you gave your reasons for, you know, maybe, um, you know, Stafford a little bit um, lower based on just his age and stuff like that. I'm just going off of last year's Super Bowl run, uh, super accurate, tough, Brings all those elements. Lamar, I'm just a little bit weary on, 
uh, with the uh, injury risk. And, you know, th- they're going to have to take an- another step forward this year um, to convince me otherwise, still top 10 quarterback. And then seven Burrow, six Herbert. So um, I know and, your love and, and, for Herbert. It rings uh, true. I absolutely love Herbert. Um, and he's, he's super good. But this year, who knows? I mean, with, with a, a revamped O line, maybe Burrow pushes himself inside the top five. I mean, it's not without the realm of possibility yeah. given those weapons he's got. So, um, but I, I, I think uh, we're pretty much in agreement with the top 13 in ter- terms of who deserves to be in the top yeah. 13. It's a different and, uh, list. Yeah. This is a you know, great list because it's one of those things that if you're talking just talent right now, but this list looks completely different. If you're telling me fantasy draft, you have a franchise and you're looking for your franchise quarterback. This right. list looks completely different. And maybe that's something we can do later on this summer as we get close to the season starting. Hey, if you had of all the quarterbacks right now, you're building your franchise. I mean, Brady is not going three. Uh, I mean, I would, I would, I just couldn't do it. I mean, Brady would might still be top 10 and say, I'd rather have one year of Brady and then later on draft a, 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 a rookie or someone or a quarterback and just get one year. But if you're telling me, I mean, it is, it's, it's a, uh, I would take well, if that it, were the case. I mean, Lawrence might go top 10 because of the absolutely, you know, no, yeah. I think it's uh, absolutely yeah. reasonable. Sure, he sure. would go top 10. I would, I mean, I would take Lawrence over Prescott. I mean, yeah. I, I'd be, I'd be honest. I take Lawrence probably over Carr even just with the upside. So I might is, take him over Murray to be quite honest with you. I don't know. I mean, it's, tough. it's a tough one, but so, uh, that's a, that's a list we could really, that's what you could really argue about. Like, Hey, who do you, who would you rather have for your, for a three to five for year? The next, yeah, yeah. Three to five years. And then hopefully, you know, later on even. So uh, love it. I, I, it's great that our top five is the same. I think that makes sense. I think it really does. Wilson is the wild card. If someone wanted to flop Wilson with Burrow, Stafford, Herbert, or Lamar, I wouldn't argue too much, but to me, he's there. And I will say final point on Lamar before we end up the show here, Lamar Jackson has the uh, the he is the exact opposite of Kyler Murray in the sense that I feel like his team would kill for him and his guys yeah, would absolutely yeah. like they'd bury the body for him and no questions asked and I, that really matters that really really matters um, and again Lamar Jackson is the greatest running quarterback in NFL history so that also matters when you're talking about hey do, do, is you know. What ranking. does he bring to the table? What does yeah. it bring to the table? Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you there. So yeah, that was fun. Top forty NFL quarterbacks. We went forty through thirteen on Chris Sims' list and filled in the rest. Uh, let us know uh, what you think on uh, Facebook, Twitter. You can email the show as well, uh, Football Lounge Podcast at Gmail dot com. And uh, yeah, give us a follow on the socials, and uh, we do have that YouTube channel as well. So if you want to watch the show. Be sure to go there, give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, you'll be notified when these shows drop every week. But that has been our top 40 quarterback edition of the Football Lounge. We'll see you all back here next week.